The birds have a lot to say this morning. Fog's moving out. It's very uh, humid outside, that's for sure. I am about to go follow Zach and pick him up. He's dropping off the water truck for Matt, and then I'm gonna bring him to the GMC that Matt left in the field and then bring him back here. He's going to get the fertilizer buggy ready to go because I think a truck is coming in like an hour, and then he's gonna start spreading fertilizer on all of our ground. And then I'm kind of like the in-between person between Matt and him today. That's, that's my job. Well, we've been away for a couple days, haven't done any filming, haven't really had anything worth filming. We are headed back to the field again this morning, uh, getting back on the hooded sprayer, doing some more burn down strips. We got a real busy day today. Uh, while I'm doing that, Zach's gonna be on the fertilizer buggy, getting started spreading uh, our Verberate potash. Uh, when he's done potash, he'll switch to dabs. So he's got about 1,200 acres He's got a cover. I've got uh, myself, I've got probably about another 700 acres. I've got a cover with my burned down strips. Looks like we're just gonna be able to get today in, starting tonight and especially tomorrow. Got another round of storms coming in. Uh, some of the stuff's supposed to get pretty bad and severe tomorrow, I think. Last I checked, uh, last update this morning was that we were in the enhanced risk category for severe storms, tornadoes and everything. Uh, they're predicting some of the tornadoes could be strong and long tracked tomorrow. I think that's going to be more towards northern Mississippi than up here in West Tennessee. But this time of year, you never can discount it out around here. But I do know, I know they call it for strong winds and another one and a half to two inches of rain. So. We just got, we got rain yesterday, got about a quarter inch. Luckily, we didn't get any more than that. We really shouldn't be running today, but hey, it's it's springtime. It, the ground is never gonna be perfect around here. It's always gonna be wet. It's gonna, always gonna be less than ideal. And if you wait for the perfect day to run, well, you're gonna be doing a lot of waiting and not getting much stuff done, so. Well, it looks like somebody's been out trying to mud my field here. They sure didn't get it very far, but I sure do appreciate them rutting my entrance up. Idiots. All right, now, you're not going to give me any problems today, I hope. We got a lot to get done. I need you to run, right? Especially you, hooded sprayer. you started up that's a positive sign when things been sitting in the field for a couple days you don't never know so it looks like zach has the tractor and buggy ready so when the truck comes he can fill up and get rolling i'm gonna go um see if he's ready with the water truck and follow him it looks like it might be a nice day they said like 77 degrees so let's hope oh look at that that is so cool love it when the sun comes through the clouds like that weed is looking I'm out here today a little bit earlier than Zach uh, fertilizer won't get here until probably close to nine nine o'clock uh, it's a uh, where we get our fertilizer from is about an hour away from our shop so they had to get in this morning get everything loaded up and then drive up here so but he'll, he'll be in in a few minutes and him and Kelly will go ahead and get my water truck moved over to the next farm where we're going to and come pick up the GMC and uh, take it back home. It'll be interesting to see what Kelly says about the, about the field entrance over here when she sees those ruts. She probably won't be quite dip, as diplomatic as I was, if I had to guess. We got about seven, eight acres left on this farm here that I wasn't able to get done uh, the, the other day before it got dark so we'll get uh, we'll get it knocked out in a hurry and get moved on to the next field 
Just to give you a quick recap of where we've been the last couple days, uh, Monday I was back out in the field uh, on the hooded sprayer, didn't do any filming. I mean, really, there's only so much I can show of me uh, spraying with a hooded sprayer. Kind of boring. Zach and Kelly uh, were able to haul off the steers. I was very fortunate. I was able to get them corralled in the barn Sunday night without too much difficulty. It only took me about 45 minutes to trick them to stay in the barn so I could shut the gates. So they were relatively easy to load up Monday morning. It wasn't, definitely wasn't anything camera worthy. And <laughs> thank goodness for that. Cause we've had instances where uh, you could have made a whole video out of us trying to load cows. Luckily that wasn't the case this time, but Zach and Kelly got them hauled off. This is the first time uh, steers have been hauled off and I haven't been there to take them. But we got the steers weighed, weighed in and they were, uh, uh, if you remember, they were bigger than normal when I bought them. They averaged about a thousand pounds. So being that they were a little bit bigger, I wasn't really expecting them to gain as much weight per day as what a smaller one would. I, mean, I was only expecting them to average maybe 1,250 pounds, you know, whenever, whenever we finished them out. I was blown away when Kelly told me how much they weighed. Uh, they weighed almost 1,400 pounds a piece. I think one was 1,365, one was 1,385, and the third one was 1,400. So they gained an average of about 385 pounds in I think uh, 115 days, maybe 120. Uh, that comes out to probably somewhere in the ballpark of. 3.2, 3.3 pounds per day. That's way better than what we're used to. Normally the bigger steers we get, you know, they gain around 2.75, maybe 2.85 pounds per day. And the only way we've gotten over three pounds per day is if we've had a, a smaller, a younger steer. I was blown away. I knew that, I mean, I knew they were eating a lot of feed. Uh, I mean, they ate at least 25% more feed over the same period of time than any steers I've had previously. They had some big old appetites. But I was kind of scared that it really wasn't sticking to them. It was just going right through them. Our freezer, our deep freezer, is gonna be plum full with beef this year. And not to mention, you know, the hog that we carried off with Dylan Joyce last week, it's gonna be ready probably first part of next week. So we got a whole hog and three quarters of a steer we gonna have to pack into a deep freezer. But it ought to it ought to be enough enough meat to to easily carry us through the year. Just having just beef and pork, not even having any chicken, which is Kelly's favorite. I'm gonna have to talk to her about getting some more more beef cooked this year rather than chicken. I like the beef. Yeah, look at those clouds moving right there. There's definitely gonna be some bad weather on the way here at some point within the next 24 hours. As usual, when you want them to blow and go. Things don't necessarily work the way you plan. Uh, gotta run back in the shop real quick because Zach's having problems getting the GPS to communicate to the John Deere monitor that we use for verberating fertilizer prescriptions. He had it set up just perfectly yesterday when we got the fertilizer buggy hooked up, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to communicate today. So there's usually several different settings in there that have got to be just right. Run back in real quick to see if we can get it figured out so he can get up and running. All right, got no GPS signal there. We got GPS here. So why is it not communicating? Well, what did I have set up wrong in it? I haven't found it out yet. That's right, so that's communicating with that. So this, that's on COM port two, so this has got, got to be on COM port one. Yep. I unplugged the antenna, plugged it back in. You said the GPS was on. GPS 
GPS was working yesterday. Uh, your plug, no. your plug came unplugged down here. This is what goes. Uh, this is what connects the Green Star wiring harness into the nav two to get GPS signal. I should pop up here in a second and go back through this. Still not popping up though. Well, I gotta say today has been a complete cluster. It is now 1.30 in the afternoon. I've done a grand total of three acres. Zach is still not spreading fertilizer. We're not getting GPS signal to the John Deere 2630 monitor in the tractor in order to control the fertilizer buggy can't control the fertilizer buggy we can't variable rate apply the prescriptions that we need to everything was ready to go yesterday everything tested out fine had gps yesterday i mean well, all we had to do was turn the tractor on put fertilizer in the buggy and it was going to be ready to go to the field today for whatever reason it's not had a tech come out a little while ago and he couldn't figure out why it wasn't working right. He had to leave at noon to go to another appointment, but he gave me another cable to try thinking, you know, the only thing it could be is the wiring harness, but he didn't have the right adapters to make it hook up to my cable. So I ran to Jackson to get the serial gender changer that I needed. And what do I do? I get the wrong one. I swore I needed a, a female to female gender changer, but no, I needed a male to male. So after over an hour wasted, Zach is now on his way back to Jackson to swap it out and get the correct one. I don't even know if it's gonna fix the problem or not. I have my doubts, but we've got nothing else to try right now. So meanwhile, co-op is sitting there at my shop with a full tender truck, just twiddling their thumbs. I really, really hate it when other people are having to wait on me. It just burns me up because, I mean, I don't want to have to wait on other people. And the last thing I want to do is have other people wait on me. Technology is great when it's working. When it's not working, though, it's a complete and utter nightmare. I mean, we tried everything. We tried changing out the nav too, thinking maybe it wasn't putting out an output signal. That wasn't a problem, though. Even with our old, old adapter cable, We've got continuity on all three wires going from the 20, going from the 2630 monitor all the way back to the NAV2. So there's no reason that it shouldn't be getting signal. But for whatever reason, it's not getting signal. And to top it all off, just check the weather forecast a little bit ago. We've now been upgraded to a moderate risk for severe storms tomorrow. We're kind of at the north, very northern edge of the moderate risk. So probably not going to get any severe weather, but you never know if the the least at least we're probably gonna get a heck of a lot of rainfall that we don't need right now it's days like today's i kind of wish i just worked for somebody and let somebody else have to deal with the headaches and all i had to do was just work well the dude have what you need so this is it that's it man for the love of all the money and the 12 disciples i hope it works I just hope when this doesn't work that the tech picks his phone back up and has something else in mind because I got no idea. The only other idea I got is to let everybody watch me crack open a beer at 2.30 in the afternoon in the middle of the week because that's the only solution I got. I guess they can watch me pound my head up against one of them tractor tires laying on the side of the shop because I'm lost. I don't, I don't know if anybody in West Tennessee's got any ideas, but I know I sure enough have called everybody, and nobody knows. Let's keep it's our fingers be, crossed. It's going to be something simple, and I'm going to cuss for about five minutes. That's the old table. Stick that over behind the seat. We might need it for the planter tractor. All right, where's the end of it? There it is. All right, that's plugged up. All right, start it up and see what we got. Started, just keep All right, let's turn the key on. All right, let me know when we got uh, 
GPS on the Pro 700 there. Oh, we just got satellite. Well, that's better than what we had before right there. Let's see. I got it now. I... How in a day? I don't know, the other one was just fine. We used it all last year and all of a sudden it's not working. Yeah, it's got our, it's got position. All right, we'll hurry up and get that thing loaded up and see what you can get spread this afternoon. Maybe things have finally turned our way about six hours too late. Something finally went right. I didn't think that that uh, new cable was going to work because the other cable was showing full continuity all the way through. I have no idea why it worked and the other one wasn't working. I, I think I know just enough about electricity and elect electronics to screw things up. So anyway, he's finally he's finally working. It's now 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, maybe with any luck, he'll be able to get that uh, 16 tons in that tender truck spread out this afternoon before we got to quit. Uh, while he was gone to get parts, uh, we got changed fields and got filled up. So we got 30 acre field ahead of us and hope to get it done and moved on, moved on to another farm this afternoon. Hopefully everything else will go smoothly. We sure, we sure do need it to because we are about to be out of the field for several days in a row. I don't know how long, but we're going to be out, out for several days. So when we get back in the tractor, we'll check the weather forecast.